Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. This is Alderney, a small British island off the coast of France, which is considered by many to be one of the most fortified islands in the world, dating back to the Victorian times, but more recently occupied by the Nazis in World War II, heavily armed and defended in an almost overwhelming way. In this video, I'm jumping in a plane with my friend Neil for a quick trip over to the island to scout, photograph, and just explore this fascinating place. Going to check out some tunnels. This is wild. Okay, so switching it up a little bit today, just out at the local airport about 10 minutes from my house, going over to the uh, island of Alderney, which is off the coast of France, part of the Channel Islands. And uh, this is a place that I've been researching for a little bit now, just looking into World War II history here for part of a long-term project I'm working on. And I uh, wanted to get out there. My friend Neil, who's back there prepping the aircraft, uh, he's actually been there a number of times, very familiar with the place. He's also a pilot, offered to boot us out there. We're doing like a bit of a scouting mission we're going to treat this as. Just going to finish prepping the plane and then we're off over the English Channel. Pretty excited. Where are we taking off from? We're taking off from Blackbush and we're heading down to Alderney but we're going to go Farnborough, Portsmouth, Isle of Wight and then pretty much straight line to Part of the Channel Islands, which is a group of British islands off the coast of France in the English Channel, and has a very fascinating history. It's often referred to as the most fortified island in the world, and it's quite a small place with a population nowadays of under 2,000 people. Back in the 19th century, the British installed massive fortifications to deter attacks from the French, and then fast forward to World War II, and Alderney was just about completely evacuated due to the impending occupation by the Nazis as they moved their way through France. And they arrived in 1940 and were here until the end of the war in 1945. And to say this island was heavily fortified would be an understatement. The Nazis set up gun batteries, anti-aircraft guns, searchlights, tunnel systems, and over 30,000 landmines. And a lot of that is still present today, and it's a place that I've really wanted to go and check out. Okay, just landed in Alderney, amazing little flight in, and we're going from here to the hotel, and then we're gonna switch it up a little bit, try to get a rental car. There was a bit of confusion, and they don't have any availability now, so we rented e-bikes, which actually is kind of like a, a nice change, I think. You know, bomb around on these bikes, head out to some of these spots, and I think it'd be a pretty cool way to, uh, to see the island. Just got our bikes, we're in the hotel room, we're getting loaded up. And uh, originally coming out here, I really wanted to shoot some 4x5, some large format. It's just what I've been using so far as I start this project, documenting some of these uh, old World War II you know, pieces of history, but obviously couldn't get a car. And then we're also only really out here for a day. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll just simplify for once and use this as a bit of like a scouting mission. Uh, obviously gonna make some images. I did bring a GFX 50R. This will give me a feel for how things look out here. Uh, but just like mark down some spots, find some places I wanna revisit with a large format at a later date. But I also did bring this thing here. This is an Epson RD1S. This is their old school digital rangefinder camera. Looks like a Voigtlander Bessa. 
And I've had this for a couple months and I haven't really shot with it yet. So I figured this could be a good opportunity to just like use it as a bit of a travel camera, get a feel for the images. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go put a GoPro on the bike and we're gonna get on the road. So this is something that I'm definitely trying to get better at, just not always feeling like I have to create work right away at a place, but treating these shoot days or even trips as opportunities to get to know a place better and scout future images. This is definitely a slower way of working, especially when you don't know exactly when you'll be able to get back to a place, uh, but it's a nice change of pace from rushing into things and putting pressure on yourself to create right away. I think in the end, it leads to stronger work. Dude. So nice. Isn't that stunning? So this is where it starts. So there were really two places that I guess you could say I kind of like bookmarked for this trip to visit. One of them was Babette Head, which is this northwestern point area, I guess you could say. Apparently this is where some of the best uh, Nazi fortifications still remain. And just getting out here, it's wild. It's like all of these bunkers and gun encasements built into the surrounding rock here. Uh, tunnels and trenches, a whole bunch of like underground tunnel systems. It's really wild. It's overwhelming. <laughs> I don't really know where to start, but lots to explore. So this is a pretty cool scene in here. Obviously today it's a super bright sunny day, so it's pretty tough from a photography standpoint outside, but uh, in here, this old bunker where I guess a gun was mounted, looking this way, there's all this like all orange and green, all these colors and textures, and obviously the tunnel running off. So this doorway here is pretty neat, and I think I will make an image of this. Gotta do one with the Epson here. All right, so this day is flying. It is 5.40, got a buggy out of here, grab a bite to eat. Definitely feeling overwhelmed. Got to remind myself this is a scouting trip, but it is good to come out and see this stuff. This spot specifically is one that I would love to come back to with the large format, just this gun emplacement here built into the landscape. So much stuff around here, but it just pulling back wide and, and seeing this. It's a pretty crazy sight. So uh, this is a cool frame. Gonna get some dinner though and come back and shoot it with the GFX 50R when the light's a little bit nicer because I'd love to see what it looks like. I think it could be pretty neat. Going to check out some tunnels. Crazy. Unfortunately, the water's a little deep. 
it's all good, I'm not going to. You see what the honor works right there? At the end. What is all that? I think that was a gun replacement. The doors outside, we might be able to see it from the outside. I can sort of see a room when they put the gun. And then just back there, there's some steps that went up. Might be worth exploring that. Told you it went away. Wild. So unfortunately, that is the end of the road in these tunnels, but it is what it is, I guess. It's a little dark. Although, what is this? This is cool. Bit of a narrow squeeze. The amount of concrete they used to build all this stuff is really quite wild. So here I was worrying about packing light, and then here's Neil packing an Airflex 16 millimeter. <laughs> Going the opposite direction for me. Here's my sweet ride for our time on the island. This little e-bike, first bike I've ridden in probably 15 years and uh, pretty surprised I haven't fallen off yet. All right, off, off again. Setting e-bike to nice max to power. Okay, we're ready to go. Kickstand. <laughs> <laughs> So back in a minute, just have to take a quick break to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. So if you've been wanting to build a website for your work, Squarespace is a great platform to do just that. What I've come to love about them is just the ease of use and the quality of templates. You can set up a portfolio in minutes without any previous experience, choosing from a wide range of clean and stylish designs that are customizable with endless design options and also just really simple features like clicking and dragging to reorder gallery images, which is something that I absolutely love. You can also set up a shop to sell prints, books, zines, and other things like that. So check out squarespace.com today for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can use my link below to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So this here is called the Odeon, and this is a naval range finding tower, I believe. But this is, I think, one of the most like iconic structures on the island here. Definitely the most kind of prominent. This is a really, really interesting view here with the, the cliff and then up in the middle, the old train tracks. Definitely something here. Gotta wind it. Always forget. How's that for a screen preview? An old one and a half inch. <laughs> nice. Love this thing. I could have shot with this the whole trip and I'd be completely happy. Although I haven't seen the images yet. I say that now, so I might take that back afterwards. Six megapixels.
So just wrapping up, I think this will probably be my last scene. I was hoping for just like that tail end of the warm light right before it goes below the horizon, but unfortunately this haze rolled in and kind of killed that last bit. So just left with, it's almost like blue hour, but it's a little gray. So we'll see how it looks. I like this composition though. This is definitely one that I will note for future trips. So going into day two, we weren't able to pick up the rental bikes until later in the morning. So I decided to wake up nice and early before the sun rose, grab the Epson and went for a stroll down to the harbor just to explore and see what the town had to offer. So beautiful morning, super peaceful in this town. It's so quiet, but unfortunately, just like last night, there's uh, more of this haze that's blocking that warm light. So it's kind of gray out. Not the best, but not much I can do about that. Gonna go search, I think, a little bit through town and then see if I can get the e-bikes soon. This is one to make note of right here. Yeah. Because this, in the right light, in the right conditions, this yeah, would be this a is really. Yeah, the sun's going down on a non hazy evening. Yeah. Even just like it's so imposing, even on like a misty or a foggy morning. Yeah, but the one around there, you'll see, is even more. Yeah, crazy. Okay, let's do it. All right, so this might be the last location of the trip. We got a couple hours left before we got to fly out again. There's a old British fort up here, which is just massive, but then the Nazis kind of built onto it with coastal defense when they're here. So littered all over, just like everything else on the island. Super bright, sunny day out again. So image making up might not be the best, but definitely going to uh, catalog a few images and also see what's inside. So we just came from down there, up here, and there's an area where I guess there was just massive gun emplacements. You can see the rusted rails. And then same on this side, overlooking the beach. And then same below my feet, this goes out. And there's a searchlight in there, which would go at the other side. So pretty cool place to end the second day. Glad we came here. Wasn't super interested in this Victorian stuff, uh, just more so the World War II stuff, but you know, coming here, seeing the scale of this, even just the possibilities for image making, this stuff in here, you know, with the light coming in and the staircases, I think I actually created an image or two that I'm quite happy with, but I, like even more so than that, seeing this just adds another layer to this island and how fortified it is. And you get that feeling obviously from the World War II stuff, but then you see this and it kind of takes you a step back and it's really like no place I've ever been before. You know, all of this stuff kind of dominating this small piece of land and it's, it's truly otherworldly. Anyways, wrap things up. Got a little bit more time, wander, a couple more images. Time to get back on the plane and go.
Seriously, I love this thing. So fun. So that's gonna wrap things up, I think. You know, cool to end this trip at this Victorian Ford, a place that I wasn't that interested in, like I mentioned, but I actually ended up making a couple images that I was quite excited about, which is, you know, pretty rewarding just because obviously the rest of the trip, the light hasn't been great, obviously shooting these wide World War II defenses and uh, bright sunlight, blue skies just does not work. So yeah, this has been pretty neat, but can't wait to get back here, you know, coming out to Alderney, I had some like preconceptions and, and some ideas of what I would do here and you know maybe making a few images that are part of something bigger but come to a place like this and you quickly realize that you know this is a project in itself from like the town to the people to the history to the fortifications and there's just so much to learn and so much to discover you know especially the World War II stuff there's a really sad history to it as well. A lot of these fortifications were made with forced labor. There were a bunch of labor camps on the island, one of them run by the SS. So uh, a lot to learn and just explore and photograph. And uh, can't wait already to get back out here, spend a few more days, have a little more time, bring the large format, see where things go. But anyways, right now, got to get to the airport, prep the plane. Neil's got to prep the plane. Of course, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> And then uh, we're off over the English Channel, excited for the flight, catch some sweet views, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this one. See you soon.